Fellow Ghanaians, good evening. Tomorrow, 30th June 2020, the Electoral Commission will begin the process of compiling a new register of voters, which the Commission will use for the 7th December 2020 presidential and parliamentary elections. The compilation of a voter's register is one of the most important tasks in the effective functioning of any democracy. Because if an eligible citizen's name is not on the register, that citizen cannot exercise the right to vote and cannot therefore participate in the determination of the choice of the government of the day. It is thus vitally important that all eligible voters register so on the designated day of 7th December, they can vote to choose the president of the nation and the member of parliament of their area. In effect, our vote, our thumb, is the expression of our individual sovereign power as a citizen, which we should cherish and guard at all times. Our country, Ghana, is regularly cited as the shining example of the place in Africa where the electoral process works and where it is always being improved upon. We have had seven consecutive presidential and parliamentary elections, which has given us five presidents in the 27-year history of the Fourth Republic, with peaceful transfers of power from a governing to an opposition party on three separate occasions. It is a record virtually without parallel on the African continent, which we should all treasure. All of these did not threaten the foundations of the state. And even when there was disagreement with the result of an election, it was the Supreme Court rather than the streets that determined its outcome. From tomorrow, in 33,367 polling stations across the country, we embark on yet another journey to deepen further our nation's democratic credentials as the exercise to compile a new voter's register to be used for the December 7 general election commences. The hurdle which stood in the way of the new voter's register was surmounted last Thursday, 25th June, when a seven-member panel of the Supreme Court, presided over by the Chief Justice, in a unanimous decision, settled all the issues surrounding the voters' register. The decision affirmed the right of the Electoral Commission to proceed with the compilation of a new register in accordance with the provisions of constitutional instrument, CI, 126. It reiterated the widely held belief that a credible electoral register and indeed a credible election are important ingredients to securing the future well-being of any democratic nation. I am proud to be a citizen of a nation whose independent institutions like the Judiciary and the Electoral Commission continue to operate without fear or favor, ill will or malice, and without regard to the political, religious, or ethnic affiliations of any citizen or group of citizens. There are some who have argued and continue to argue that in the midst of a pandemic, the compilation of a new register, and indeed the conduct of the parliamentary and presidential elections, should be put on hold and scheduled for a later date, perhaps when the pandemic ends. That is not possible. The Constitution of our Republic makes no provision for the extension of the mandate of the President who wields executive power beyond four years. To exercise executive power in the Ghanaian state, you must be duly elected by the Ghanaian people. 
you must have their freely expressed consent. On 7th January 2021, when my mandate as the current president expires, a duly elected person must be ready to be sworn in as president of the republic. There is no other way. And in order to forestall any needless constitutional controversy, which could throw our nation into jeopardy, we must vote on 7th December 2020. The same applies to Parliament. We should not fear or be alarmed. Despite the COVID pandemic, elections are being properly conducted in many nations across the globe. In Asia, we've witnessed the conduct of a successful election of South Korea in April at the height of the pandemic in that country. In Europe last week, we have seen those of Poland. And in our own continent of Africa, both Mali and Malawi have preceded us in organizing successful national elections. Surely, it is not beyond Ghana to join these nations in organizing a successful general election, even in the midst of the pandemic. Fellow Ghanaians, we have chosen to govern our country according to the tenets of multi-party democracy and the principles of democratic accountability. And we dare not trade them off, more so during times of crisis. To guarantee the safety of all eligible Ghanaians at the 33,377 polling stations across the country, the Electoral Commission has put in place the necessary elaborate protocols as outlined earlier in the day by the Chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Jean Mensah. All these protocols should be adhered to strictly. Additionally, I want to remind all Ghanaians that all the other protocols and restrictions, especially those dealing with large gatherings, must be adhered to and enforced at the polling stations at all times. So let us all abide by them and conduct ourselves in a manner befitting the image and status of Ghana. So I urge all eligible Ghanaians, I repeat all eligible citizens, that is Ghanaians of 18 years of age or above and of sound mind, no matter what party they belong to, if any, to go out and register so that they can exercise their civic responsibilities on 7th December to elect a government of their choice in a free, fair, peaceful, and transparent election. Using your God-given and constitutional rights costs nothing, but staying home can come at a very steep price. The pandemic notwithstanding, we have to strengthen Ghanaian democracy. It must be our collective duty to ensure that we have a register that is fit for purpose in December. And we must all make sure that persons who do not meet the requirements as set out clearly in the Constitution do not find their names into the register. If you aid the registration of an ineligible person and you are caught, you will face the full rigors of the law. The election on 7th December must be a Ghanaian election, not a West African election, conducted with a register of Ghanaian voters. That is the only way the true will of the Ghanaian people can manifest. It is crucial that both the registration exercise and the electoral process itself be conducted in an atmosphere of peace and security, devoid of intimidation and violence. The Ghanaian people must go about the exercise of their civic duties in peace and in freedom. The security agencies have assured me that they have made adequate preparations for this and to guarantee the, sanct the sanctity of the process. They have assured me of their determination 
to carry out their duties without fear or favor. Improper behavior by any citizen, no matter their political color, will not be tolerated. And I'm encouraged by the recent reassurance by the Inspector General of Police that police have been instructed to be even-handed in their response to issues. That is the only way the rule of law can be upheld. The long-standing deployment of security personnel, especially the military, along our borders is another dimension of this process of guaranteeing the peace of the nation. Fellow Ghanaians, it is no secret that our neighbor to the north, Burkina Faso, has in recent times been at the receiving end of a number of terrorist attacks, as has another neighbor, Côte d'Ivoire. To shore up our borders against such attacks and to defend our nation's territorial integrity, the armed forces, at least since I came into office, have been very proactive in engaging in op operations to secure our borders and fall any potential terror attacks on our soil. Operations such as Concord Fist and Kwandungu have been going along for some time, since 21st February 2019, to meet this objective. Deployments of soldiers in areas along our borders have been regular, and residents living in border towns will bear testimony to this. Again, in the fight against COVID-19, I took the decision on Saturday, the 21st of March, to close all our borders by land, air, and sea. To ensure substantial compliance with this directive and to assist personnel of the Immigration Service, our eastern, western, and northern borders were shored up by some personnel from the military. This development, for example, during the period of the three-week lockdown of Accra, Tema, Kasoa, and Kumase, led to the arrest of some 5,000 persons along our borders who had entered our country illegally. Indeed, the first six recorded cases of COVID-19 in the Volta region, for example, were those of West African nationals who entered the country illegally. In total, 207 soldiers have been deployed along the borders of the Upper East Region. 110 soldiers in the Northern Region, 102 in the Northeast Region, 98 in the Volta Region, 72 in the OT Region, 69 in the Upper West Region, 64 in Bruno Region, 21 in Savannah Region, and 14 in the Western region. Let me state, without any form of equivocation, that these deployments are not in any way intended to prevent or prevent Ghanaians from registering to vote in December. They are there for their express purpose, which is to guard our borders. That is the limit of their remit and they would not be permitted to stay beyond that remit. I'm fully aware, like the military commanders, of the sensitivity of their deployments at this point position in our history. And I'm confident that that sensitivity will be fully respected. I have no interest in disenfranchising any eligible Ghanaian from registering in tomorrow's exercise nor am I interested in any improper machinations to win any election. I've spent my life fighting for free democratic institutions in our country, and I'll continue in that fight for the rest of my life. The idea of being a president who emerges from a rigged election is abhorrent to every fiber of my being. I want to continue to be the president of a Ghanaian people who have given me their free consent with the blessing of the Almighty. So please, once again, 
if you are 18 years of age and above and are of sound mind, from tomorrow or the appointed time, go to your polling station and register. If you do not register now, you cannot vote in December. Present your Ghana passport or card, which are the only two forms of valid identification. In the absence of any of these valid IDs, an applicant can submit one completed identification guarantee form endorsed by two registered voters to be registered and issued with a voter ID card. By these procedures, all eligible voters will be registered. No disenfranchisement of voters is contemplated by them. Together, and adhering to the safety protocols of the polling stations, let us demonstrate that even during a pandemic, we in Ghana continue to be a beacon of democracy on the continent. Our democracy requires not a unity of ideas or political allegiances, but a unity of commitment to the Ghana project the free, democratic, open, prosperous, and united nation, respectful of human rights and the rule of law, that animated our forefathers to make the sacrifices for the liberation of our nation from foreign rule that has bequeathed to us our beloved Ghana. May God bless us all in our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention and have a good night.